Okay, everybody, welcome to the director's commentary for Diablo 2. I'm Matt Sammy, and I was the director on the cinematics. To my left is... Nick Carpenter, I was the designer on the Diablo 2 cinematics. Scott Beta, I was the producer on the D2 cinematics. Harley Huggins, I was animation supervisor and the screenwriter of the cinematics. Joe Ray Hall, yes sir. Cinematics. So we're just going to talk a little bit about sort of a mix of things, some of the technical issues and also just general stuff about these flicks. So Story element. I'd like to start by talking about some technical issues because you can see it right here. This is the first time we really had to deal a lot with hair. This guy right here has got hair on his head, which was a big deal. His chin, his, and his nose, his ears. And that was really, really something new for us and also this, this other dude in the cloak is, well, he's covered in a cloak, which was not all that easy to tackle. And this was the first time that we really had to deal with things like this, hair and cloth and, and organic surfaces, lots of skin. Right at this point, he's seen material. And he's he's going to recount the story to him, what had happened, the setup. This guy right here is... You know, probably pretty reminiscent of Salieri, and uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we, we wanted to use a narrator, someone who was there, who could, who could sort of explain and tie the whole story together start to finish. So, so we used the, the flashback structure, so we had this guy recounting the tale, all the things he had seen, this guy being Marius, the old man in the corner there. I think the obvious thought to doing the cinematics would be you'd want to see your character in the game, you know, um, completing quests or, or, you know, taking part in action. But the problem is you have all these character classes and uh, it's really technically um, beyond our capabilities to do flicks of this quality, you know, five different versions for every single quest or, or act. So we had to come up with a way to, you know, to have flicks that could still tell the story of the game. Something else that we tried to do, too, is make it so that the, the flicks not only went along with the game, but told the other side of the story that you didn't really get to see in the game. And thereby, if you just watched the cinematics by themselves, they would, they would tell a story as well. Yeah, we should probably point out that Frank Gorshin, who did the voice of the, of the narrator, really contributed a lot just in terms of his, his line readings to how we um, played, portrayed uh, Marius. He brought a lot to it. This was our tribute to Ray Harry. Jason the Argonauts. Jason the Argonauts. So here we see Marius, the narrator, as a young man. He's recounting, he's recounting the tale of when he when he first met the Wanderer, dreams, followed me in all the crazy dreams. stuff that went down. How had he you can again see lots of the, lots of the things we had to deal with on this project. This Fire everywhere. Sometimes it was, uh, able to sometimes it was more successful than others. Sword. Some of the fire didn't really quite look like fire, but some of it terror. does. So I guess we were kind of successful in that way. To hide here. I like rolling the dice. Yeah. And too, now might be a good time to talk about um, our using a compositor for the first time a lot. We really started to break things out into different layers so that we could render quicker to, and we could to have, do more, of his own. Uh, have more control of what we, what we were looking at. Uh, wrap our hands. Yeah, really, the first project that we did that we shot things all in pieces was uh, StarCraft, uh, actually a StarCraft expansion. And we were just kind of learning how to do it. On this project, we really, really took it to extremes. Like every one of these shots is, I don't even know how many pieces, like everything is a, is a layer. You know, that little dude, the, the fire, the, the little sparks, like, you name it, it's a separate piece. And it's all comped together after the fact. Yeah, and comping's like, it's like a big sandwich, you know. You have, Sometimes there's something in the foreground, and that's the first piece of bread, and then it goes all the way back to the background, where the set would be, all the layers in between. The evil eye 
Yeah, by the end of the project, we got pretty good at it. <laughs> Something else that we did on this that isn't so apparent uh, is for the intro, we shot the whole thing on video beforehand which really helped a lot. We intended to do that with all the flicks, but we wound up just kind of not having time, so we didn't, but it turned out to be a really, really good thing because we were able to see what worked and what didn't and also use it, use the footage later on as reference. Like that shot's a perfect example. We, we just took it straight from the video and actually there's, there's a place on this DVD where you can see that side by side. And it's not really motion capture. Just reference. Real big reference. The animator. Yeah. Live action. And the idea here was really that that this guy, this wanderer, dude in the cloak, you know, he, he's the guy from the first game. And at the end of the first game, he had decided in a in a selfless moment to take Diablo and really hold him sort of within himself, and he thought he could hold him in. But of course, as we discover, what winds up happening is the demon is too strong and, and he's not able to do it. So from time to time, things happen. The demon explodes out of him and it happened right here in this, this place, Why this uh, bar, restaurant, tavern, tavern, which started life as an opium den, but we kind of decided to tone it down a bit. Probably, probably a good move. And really, that was the intent. That's what was supposed to be going on here, that, that he comes in and he just loses it and all hell breaks loose and, and everyone takes it. And for whatever reason, he calls out to Marius, our narrator, and Marius starts to follow him at this point. And so is able to recount what happens throughout the rest of the story.